In this video, we show how to calculate the limiting cation radius in the octahedral hole of a face-centered cubic unit cell. Uh, we're trying to determine how a unit cell is packed. And the idea here is that generally an ions pack, much as metal atoms do, and cations pack in the holes left behind uh, by, the, uh, by, that, by that anion packing. Uh, so suppose that the anions packed in a, a face-centered cubic unit cell, like what we have right here, Right, so every single one of these spheres that you see would correspond to an, an, an ion. And then we've said that there's two types of holes in this structure. One of them is the octahedral hole, like what you have here at the edge, right, and in the center of the cube. And then you will have tetrahedral holes, which will be right here. Okay? Right, so we're going to calculate uh, what would be the limiting cation radius that would actually fit perfectly into this octahedral hole right here. Right, so uh, I'm going to move away from this physical model into uh, this representation. But what we actually have is that uh, the cations are fitting right in between these two anions at the edge, right? So right here. That is your cation. All right, so then uh, we have that this uh, edge of the cube is going to be equal to the radius of one anion, r minus then twice the radius of the uh, cation, r plus, and then another radius of that anion, r minus. Okay? Uh, at the same time, we know that this phase diagonal that you have right here, okay, is actually uh, the sum of four anion radius. One, two, three, and four. All right? So if we're able to relate these two uh, edge and uh, phase diagonal for this structure, then we will be able to find a relationship between uh, the cation radius and the anionic radius. Okay, and of course that is provided by your Pythagorean theorem, in which you have that f squared is equal to e squared plus e squared. Okay, that is what you're trying to do. All right, so then uh, we can we can easily solve for this. Right, notice that f squared there is going to be four r minus squared. And then here we have 2e squared, so it will be 2 times that. But this is equal to 2r two r minus plus 2r plus. Okay, so 2, 2r minus plus 2r plus squared. And solving uh, here for r, r plus as a function of r minus will give us the limiting cationic radius that fits perfectly into uh, that octahedral hole. All right, so we take the square root. And then uh, we can divide everything by 2. Okay, to give 2 r minus is going to be equal to the square root of 2 r minus plus the square root of 2 r plus. Or in other words, r plus is going to be equal to 2 minus the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 of r minus, which is 0 0.414 r minus. So that is going to be your limiting cationic radius uh, as a function of the anion radius. Okay, and we're gonna uh, we can put it right here in this list, 0.414 r minus. Okay, so uh, this calculation has the following implication. Okay, we want to try to see if we can fit an anion uh, cation right there, and we don't know now what the radius of that cation should be as a function of the radius of the anion that acts as the cation in that crystal structure. Now, a problem with uh, this packing would be that this number will give you the a tightest fit possible. But in that situation, what you would have is that uh, these anions that you have here in the face would actually be touching with each other. And of course, because they are both, uh, or all of them are negatively charged, that would lead to a lot of electrostatic repulsion. Right? So the idea is that this is going to be a limiting value, such that if in the crystal structure that you're trying to resolve, you find that the radius of the cation is larger than this number, then it is that you will have this type of crystal structure, okay, uh, uh, but it will be expanded such that the anions don't touch directly. Okay? Now, uh, there's actually an upper limit to uh, this type of packing, right? So face-centered uh, unit cell uh, with occupation of octahedral holes, and that is that if the uh, radius of the cation becomes much, much, much larger than this number, Okay, and actually reaches this number, then uh, you will get to a change into the uh, packing 
uh, to generate a simple cubic packing of the anions in which the cations would lead uh, uh, would be into the cubic hole left behind. Okay, so uh, there's another type of holes in the face center cubic uh, unit cell, uh, which are the tetrahedral holes, and again, those would be the ones that are right behind uh, each one of the spheres uh, in the corners. And we're actually not going to carry out the calculation for the limiting radius. Instead, we're actually simply going to re uh, uh, write here what the limiting radius would be, which is going to be 0 0.225 r minus. Okay, so having those uh, uh, limiting radius for all of the structures that uh, we have seen here, and those are the ones that are more common, allow us to then uh, try to predict uh, what the general packing would be according to the various uh, relationships of the cationic radius and the ionic, anionic, anionic radius. All right, so here are your choices. If you have that the radius uh, of the cation is larger than 0 0.32 R minus, then the, packing, the preferred packing structure would be uh, a simple cubic, right? That's what the anions would do. And then the cations would be in the hole. Cations in cubic hole. Or actually, I can uh, re rewrite this a little bit better by just saying, uh, where are the anions and where are the cations? Anions and then cations. Cubic hole. Now, if uh, you have that the radius of the cation uh, is smaller than this number, but larger than uh, the limiting number for the octahedral hole for 1, 4, r minus, then you will have that the anions will pack in a face cubic, uh, face center cubic uh, packing, and then the cations will be in the octahedral holes. And if uh, the cation radius happens to be in between the limiting octahedral uh, radius and the limiting tetrahedral radius, then the anions would pack uh, in a face center cubic uh, manner with the cations occupying the tetrahedral holes. Okay, so with these simple guidelines, you can predict many uh, uh, natural and unique uh, solid structures. Uh, there's a, one more thing that you have to worry about, and that is the stoichiometry. For example, uh, if you actually have to, uh, you find a solid that prefers this packing structure, but the stoichiometry is uh, a one to one, for example, that would be zinc sulfide, right? So zinc sulfide uh, likes to pack with the sulfides uh, in a face center cubic unit cell and the zinc in the tetrahedral holes, right? The problem here is that the stoichiometry doesn't work out because you have that in the face center cubic unit cell, there's four anions in the unit cell, but eight tetrahedral holes, okay? Here, because you have one cation per anion, what that would mean is that uh, not all of the tetrahedral holes are actually full. Instead, what we actually know from that structure from the x-ray is that, yes, the sulfide packs in a face center cubic unit cell, but only half of the tetrahedral holes uh, are occupied by zinc 2 plus uh, ions. Okay, so uh, hopefully with these uh, calculations of uh, limiting radius of cations and anions, and then the stoichiometry that you have to think, uh, you have to take into consideration, then you can easily predict uh, uh, the way that ionic solids packed in various uh, lattices.